The example we're going to kick off with today. Find this one in your booklets for me, please. Which skill are we on? Yeah, which skill are we on? Sir? Substitution is skill number. So we did reverse chain. Five. Five out of eleven. We're going to do substitution just for today, okay? Okay, guys. Um, there's substitution. There's just the. I've got the steps down the side here. Um, we only did a few of these as practice, and you basically did the same ones for homework, which is why I'm not super bothered to check them because we already did them in class. Um, the difference in this case here is that we're going to do it with some trig functions as well. Okay, there's going to be a couple of things that may be slightly different. Has anybody got a suggestion of what they think a sensible substitution could be for this one here? Muzike, what would you use? Cosine, I'm not asking for any trig identities. You could possibly do that, but I'm not, that's not actually what I want to do for a substitution. I want to try and think about what I could do for a substitution. Yeah, I'm going to do 1 plus sine x is the thing that I'm going to use as my substitution. Because do you remember on the previous page, I'd said something like if it's inside a bracket, if it's inside a square root, if it's inside a power, that can often be a good substitution to use here. So the substitution that we're going to use is that u is equal to 1 plus sine x, OK? Yes. Um, you mean if you did u cube? It could do like in the previous ones it did, but for the trigonometry ones, that tends to make things a little bit messier. Okay. So for now, we're just going to kind of stick with it like this. Um, just it, it worked sort of well for the polynomial ones, but for the polynomial ones, you also could have just done whatever was inside the bracket as well. Okay. So we've got u equals 1 plus sine x. And I'm going to try and work out all of the different things that I've got here. So I've got cos x, sine x, 1 plus sine x cubed. And crucially, I've got the dx bit. How do I get to the dx bit for the substitution? I differentiate it. OK, now I don't even have to do implicit differentiation here because I've got u explicitly in terms of x. So in fact, why don't I do my um, differentiation on this side? I've got 1 plus sine x. So I'm differentiating it with respect to x. 1 plus sine x differentiates to cos x. OK, so if I rearrange this, I get that dx is equal to du over cos x. Hmm, a little bit of a problem here. Yeah, du, which is the same as saying it's du times 1 over cos x. Just we're going to leave it like that, and you're going to see why we're going to leave it like that. And this is often something that happens here. Now, the problem when we look at this to begin with is our aim in substitution is usually to turn everything up here, which is in terms of x. The idea is to try and turn it so it is purely in terms of u. So there's a little bit of a problem here because I've got that it's 1 over cos x, and that's in terms of x. And if I wanted to, I could try and find out what cos x is in terms of u, but that might be quite tricky. I'm going to leave it in this form for a second, and you're going to see why I'm going to leave it like this. Now, if I try and do the, um, some other bits of the substitution, I already know what this bit here is going to be. 1 plus sine x cubed is just going to be u cubed. I'm also going to now just find out what sine x is so that I can do this bit that I've got here. Right? If I work out what sine x is, I get that u minus 1 equals sine x. The thing, though, that I haven't worked out yet is this thing here. This is the thing that I'm putting an exclamation mark next to it because I'm like, uh-oh, I, I can't quite see how I'm going to work out cos x. But remember, I've got this thing over here, which has got a 1 over cos x. So when I substitute this bit for dx, that cos x there and this 1 over cos x here are going to cancel each other out. So we don't need to worry about the fact that there's this 1 over cos x here. This often will happen in substitution questions. And you shouldn't worry about trying to turn everything into u, because some of the x parts are going to cancel each other out. So we're going to now substitute, using this information that we've got up here and here, we're going to substitute it into the expression. So we have cos x sine x, 1 plus sine x, all cubed, with respect to x. Now, when we transform that using the substitution, I'm going to leave the cos x there for that reason I just said, because it was difficult to find out what it was in terms of u. The sine x, though, we know is u minus 1. 
and the 1 plus sine x cubed we know is u cubed. We know that dx, which is the last bit of my substitution that I've got here, is 1 over cos x du. Luckily, we have the cos x here and here cancelling out, so we should be able to end up with something that is a lot nicer to integrate. Simplifying this statement that we've got, I'm just going to rewrite it without the cos x bits here. We have u minus 1 u cubed du. And then I'll expand. So now I'm doing step three. I'm actually going to integrate this expression. So I have u to the power of 4 minus u cubed. I have to bracket that now because it's two separate terms that are being subtracted. Now when I integrate this, u to the power of 4 integrates to a fifth u to the power of 5 minus a quarter u to the power of 4 plus c. Don't forget to do the final step, which is to write your answer in terms of x. So that's a fifth u. Always make sure you try and keep your page organized so that you're always finding the things you need to find in the right place. 1 plus sine x to the power of 5 minus 1 quarter 1 plus sine x to the power of 4 plus c. So arguably, the most important thing here is this line that we have and the fact that we didn't try and find a substitution for that. You will often find that you can find things cancelling each other out if you leave them in. Okay, if you leave them in there, they often can cancel out. And unfortunately, there's, there's not like a particular rule of like, oh, when it's this kind of question, it will cancel. When it's this kind of question, it won't cancel. You have to start looking at the bigger picture of the substitution to try and agree on what's the best way of proceeding with this. And I've picked out some questions today that has like a mixture of different kinds of skills that we'll be looking at for this. Okay. So the next bit that we're going to look at, there's an exam question, but I'm actually going to skip that exam question, and we're going to go to the example that's on the, the top right-hand side of your page there, and we're going to come back to the exam question later on in the lesson. The next bit that we need to do, and I can come back to this slide later, because I know some people are still writing this down, but I can come back to this later after we've finished. In fact, should I just give you 30 seconds to do as much writing as you can? and then we'll come back and do it. Have a think at what's different about the next example, if you've already written it down, and think about what you might need to do, given that it's got definite limits, OK? So if you are writing it down, just keep going. If you haven't, just read the next example and think what needs to do. Not the exam question, but the next example. I don't need to do it. I just want you to think about what's different about this one and what might you need to do that's different. You don't, don't need to answer the question, OK? We're going to do it together. OK, so I can put this back on in a second, but the one I want us to have a look at is this example, right? This is an example now, and I only really need to give you one example of this, of definite integration with substitution. First of all, what do I mean definite integration? It means it includes limits. Indefinite in integration, if something is indefinite, it means that it's kind of not sure. That's because you get the plus c at the end. We don't know what c is. Definite integration is where it has limits, so you know that there's an actual answer. It's not going to have a plus c with it. That's why it's definite or indefinite. So although these are kind of written quite large, this is obviously meant to be a little zero at the bottom and a pi over two at the top there. We're going to try and proceed with a similar kind of um, integration technique that we've got. Um, but this time, we've got some limits. Do you remember I made that um, memory page for you? There are three things on substitution that it says. It says, what does it say, actually, Hisham, for substitution? So it says substitute, change limits, 
and a derivative of u. Previously, on this other example we've done, we did the substitute bit, which was what we were messing around with over here. We did the derivative of u, but we didn't have to change the limits because the limits were, there were no limits. It was indefinite integration. When you have limits, the limits match the dx part at the end. So here, these limits are the x coordinates. They're between 0 and pi over 2. When we transform it, and at the end, we're going to have du at the end, we will have x limits with du. They don't match each other. So we need to make sure that the limits are u limits to go with the du that we have at the end. OK? That's what we're going to do as an additional stage in this one. We are going to change the limits as well. Now, when I look at integrating this, I'm going to integrate this using substitution. But is there a different way that we could integrate this one? Yeah, the consider then scale, the reverse chain rule. This is actually one that you could do using the reverse chain rule. Could you explain why, Ronag? Uh, because the thing inside the square root, yep. uh, you can, if you differentiate, you get positive. Good. If you differentiate that, you do get the thing that's outside the front. So I wouldn't advise you to do this one with substitution, but we're going to do it with substitution just to show it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you the same thing, <laughs> and just because this happened to be the example that was in the textbook, and I thought, let's just do this one anyway. But you should not do substitution for this, really. If you saw this in the exam, you should say to yourself, OK, well, that's the derivative of that, so I'm just going to reverse chain rule it. I'm going to consider what I think it will be, and then I'm going to scale it correctly. And you wouldn't need to change the limits in that case. But because we're doing substitution, we're going to change some limits here. Yeah, what were you going to say? A hundred percent. Well, actually, it's not easier to spot, but it's, like easier, to but it's easier to do. And that's why I want you to try and always be on the lookout for reverse chain rule. There's a few questions in the exercise that are reverse chain rule. You can choose if you want to do reverse chain rule, if you want to do substitution. I don't mind. But generally in the exam, I want you to look for reverse chain rule. OK, so um, we're going to do all the substitution bit as well. And then I'm going to change the limits afterwards. What do you think is going to be a sensible substitution to use for this? 1 plus sine x. OK, good. This is going to be pretty similar to what we've just done. So I'm going to differentiate it, and I will get that du by dx is cos x, because sine differentiates to cos. And when I rearrange this to make dx the subject, dx is 1 over cos x du. So do you see we're going to get that similar thing that we had before, the thing that I said, uh-oh, we don't really know how to write cos x. It's going to cancel out with this 1 over cos x that we've got here. So that's a positive thing that's going to be happening for us. We can actually dive in pretty quickly. Um, but first of all, I want to change the limits. Okay? At the moment, my x limits are, uh, let's do the top one, pi over 2 and 0. They like doing this in the solution bank to sort of say which limit goes to which. We need to find out what u will be. All you need to do is say, when x is pi over 2, what will u be? Two. Well, Always. u will be equal to 1 plus the sine oh. of pi over 2, which is just 2. Yep, so u is 2. So the limit when it's pi over 2 will become 2. When u, sorry, when sine of um, x becomes sine of 0, you get 1 plus sine of 0. The u limit is 1. So the limits are going to be changed. We are now going to be able to state that integrating between 0 and pi over 2, cos x, the square root of 1 plus sine x dx, is the same as. And we're going to change everything now so that it all matches in terms of u. Because pi over 2 is 2, 2 has to go at the top, OK? Now, normally, you probably think that the bigger number has to go at the top. And it just happens that this one is the bigger number. But sometimes, they might be the other way around. Just keep the bigger number at the top. Uh, sorry, opposite. Just keep it in whatever order it has here, right? 
I'm going to say this now and I'm going to say this again in the future. If you ever want to swap the order of these, if you ever want to have like a zero on the top and a pi over two, do you know what you have to change to the thing inside? If you wanted to swap these limits, negative. you just make the thing inside negative. So if you ever have something and they're asking you to make it look like with the limits different how you expect, you can make the thing inside negative. Making this bit negative flips the limits. Always go with whatever they give you, though. I've probably made that sound more confusing than it needed to do. So between 2 and 1, cos x I'm going to leave in. Root of 1 plus sine x will be what? u to the half. And dx is 1 over cos x du. So you get 1 over cos x du. The cos x's cancel, and we end up with a pretty nice situation where we're integrating between 1 and 2 of u and a half du. Now we bring in the square brackets because we're doing definite integration. So that's u to the 3 over 2, 2 over 3, between 2 and 1. So we're going to sub in 2. So that's 2 over 3 times 2 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 2 over 3 times 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Let's do all of this without a calculator. What is 2 to the power of 3 over 2? Two? Two, two, two. 2 root 2, because it's 2 cubed, which is 8, square rooted, and the square root of 8 is 2 root 2. So that's 2 thirds times 2 root 2 minus 2 thirds, 1 to the power of 3 over 2? Minus 2 thirds. Now, I would probably rather factorize this and just leave it as 2 thirds, 2 root 2 minus 1. So this is the only new bit of this question here, which is this bit. And I'm going to say that we're going to change the limits. I'm going to add in a little side note at the top. Note, and I'm just going to add it in because we might use this at some point in today's lesson or possibly in future lessons. If you were going to integrate between a and b some function with respect to x, if I wanted to flip the limits, I would just make the function inside negative, OK? Just in case you sometimes might get it where you have a bigger number on the bottom, which is a bit weird. So you can make it the normal way if you want to by making this thing inside brackets negative. But I wouldn't, for today's lesson, there's nothing to worry about. I just want to start mentioning things like this because it might come up in the future. Rayhan? Right Yes. Yep. And that's why it's because if you're going to do the bottom, if you're going to do the other way around, you're subtracting them the other way around, which is the same thing as negating it. So that's why it happens in that so way. If it does come up, we're meant to do the minus sub to the function. You always do the top one, take away the bottom one. But then if that one's smaller, then you make the function. You can. Negative. You can. I'm not saying you should. It will still work. Okay. okay? It will. Yeah, the reason I'm saying it to you is because sometimes, like in this kind of exam question that I've got here, um, like I, this, I don't know if it works for this one, but they're trying to get you to show that it looks like this, where they've got a 4 and a 2. Imagine when you did your limits, it was a 2 and a 4. Then what you would need to do is make it negative so that it, it flipped away to the way that they want it to be. There will be proper examples we do with this in the future, but I just thought, why not mention it at this stage? You could just stick a minus in front of the bracket as well. OK, okay. so um, I will leave this up, but I've just realized because the printing is so bad, I've actually put the questions on the board like this. Um, and anything that's on the board are ones that need to be answered. So there's some of them that don't have limits. So C, E and F. A few questions here with limits, and I've put a box around these because maybe these can be done without substitution. And then we've got a few trickier ones down here, five, six, and eight. This is pretty much as what I'm imagining. I think this is going to be the whole lesson because I want us to really, really get good at this substitution. And then on Thursday morning, we'll do some more integration rather than mechanics. Okay? Yeah, it's really hot.